Hey guys, French Tutor here. Today we're going to talk about the brand new Echoes just released in patch 1.1. Some are amazing to farm for, but some may not be the best for your account specifically or worth your time and effort. So, I'll be showing you today which Echoes are the most efficient to farm for. Before we begin, if you end up liking the video, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It will really help me out as a small channel. Alright, let's get started. Let's start off by saying that Spectro and Glacio are the biggest winners of this patch by far, which makes sense since Jinshi was just released and the new region is based on ice. Let's talk about the three cost echoes first. We first have to mention Light Crusher because as of now, it's the only three cost echo that gives just one Sonata set, Spectro in this case, 100% of the time. As we've been farming for our DPS characters, we always had a 50-50 chance between two elements for sets for three cost echoes. This made grinding echoes more difficult. Now that changes with Light Crusher. But of course, if you don't have Jinshi or you're not using Spectral Rover, you can skip this echo. A few drawbacks is that there are only about 9 that spawn every day and they can be a little difficult to defeat. Here are the locations of this echo. Now let's talk about the 3 cost Glacial Echoes, Glacial Dreadmane, and Lumiscale Construct. Now you can farm for a total of 5 3 cost Glacial Echoes, which is more than any set in the game, so you can be pretty selective of what you need. Glacial Dreadmane can give either the Glacial or the Moonlit Sonata set, and there are about 27 of them on the map, the same number of auto puppet scouts. Sometimes they are lone wolves, but usually they are with other Echoes like with another Glacial Dreadmane, Havoc and Fusion Dreadmanes, and even Saber Boars. Now if you're echo farming for characters like Jinshi, Havoc or Spectral Rover, or Danji, I wouldn't recommend this echo too much. Because the secondary set Moonlit Sonata from Glacial Dreadmane may not be as valuable as a Spectral or Havoc set from Auto Puppet Scouts, Roche Rooms, and Tambourinists. If you specifically want Moonlit Sonata, feel free to farm these echoes. Also as a bonus, Glacial Dreadmane definitely looks the coolest out of the 5-3 cost echoes in my opinion. If you're trying to farm for a Ling Yang or a sub DPS or support Sanhua, this is the echo for you. Note that Glacial Dreadmanes are pretty strong offensively, so you want to stay on your toes. Here are the locations for this echo. Next up is the Lumiscale Construct. It is the first 3 cost echo that can give both Glacial or the Electro Sonata sets. And finally, Electro characters can get a third 3 cost echo to farm like the other elements, so this is amazing as well. Unfortunately, there are only about 7 of these on the map a day, and they don't spawn with other echoes. And what makes it worse is that some of these feel very challenging, almost like a semi-mini boss, and one of them is in a very difficult location. In my opinion, these are only worth farming for your Electro characters. If you need to specifically farm for Kakaro and Yinlin, and want an added bonus for your Ling Yang or Sub DPS Sanhua, this is the echo you want to farm. Glacial characters have many different options already, unless you want to farm for your Electro DPS characters too. If you want a bit easier echo farming, I suggest farming for the Violet Feathered Heron instead. They are spread out in the overworld a bit, but at least they also have Cyan Feathered Herons with them. There are also some Violet Feathered Herons in this new region too. Flawless is another good choice as well since they're usually accompanied with other 1 cost echoes or there's 2 of them. Here are the locations for this echo. Now let's look at the 1 cost echoes. Let's start with Clangbang, which is like the unofficial echo mini mascot for patch 1.1. They usually come in 4s, which is a plus, but they can be pretty annoying to defeat actually. The problem with Clangbang is that they are competing with too many 1 cost echoes that can give the same exact sets of Glacial and Spectro, most notably Gold Puffs and Horde Toises. There are about double the amount of Gold Puffs compared to Clangbangs, and they are often with Chirp Puffs which can give the Arrow and Havoc set and you have about 200 Hortoises. But I personally think it comes down to this. Which are less annoying to fight for you? Gold Puffs can be annoying to fight since you end up underwater sometimes, interrupting your fights. Hortoises have pretty high defense and can be super annoying to kill if they use their shell spin attack and go far away from you. Clangbangs are very jumpy so sometimes some attacks can potentially miss and their attacks stagger you frequently. So my advice? See which one is easier for you to fight without stressing out. In my opinion, it's worth to fight Gold Puffs first and then Clang Bangs if anything. Here are the locations of this Echo. Next up is Dwarf Cassowary, which gives the Arrow or Rejuvenating set. They usually come in 4s and are very easy to defeat, making farming efficient. But in my opinion, you should farm for other 1 cost Arrow Echoes first. The most time efficient 1 cost Arrow Echo is Hooskin. 
They are great to farm alongside Hu Chiefs, which are Arrow 3 cost echoes. Next, either farm for Chirp Puffs, which are usually with Gold Puffs too, and they cover the Arrow, Havoc, Glacial, and Spectral sets. Or the other choices are for Young Roche Rooms, which are together with Roche Rooms, 3 cost Glacial and Havoc echoes. Together, they can get the Arrow, Havoc, and Glacial sets. Here are the locations for this new Echo. Lava Larva is the new Fusion Echo that gives the Molten and Lingering set. My advice is that you should farm this one later in your Fusion Echo farming routine. The reason I say this is because you already have an amazing farming method already for 1 cost Fusion Echoes. Fusion Dreadmains and Young Geohysaurians, who are usually with their 3 cost Echo counterparts. Once you farm for all of them, then I recommend farming for Lava Larva since they give just 2 Sonata sets. A lot of other 1 cost Echoes can give up to 3, reducing the chances of getting a Molten set. Also note they usually spawn in 3s which is great and pretty easy to defeat. One downside is that they sometimes spawn too far apart from each other which can be a little annoying. But overall, if you are farming for your fusion main DPSs or pre-farming for Chengli, you have a pretty decent new addition. Here are the locations for this echo. And that's it for today's video. So tell me, which echoes are you gonna farm for? Let me know down in the comments below. Take care now.